create any kind of content, whether that is social media content, blog, podcast, YouTube, whatever it is, then listen up because this episode is for you. Today I'm going to be discussing the five biggest content marketing mistakes that are turning potential clients away. Yes, these mistakes are actually costing you money. So if you're making them and you're creating content, then it's actually content that's hindering your business rather than helping it. Content creation can be a real drain on your time, I know, which is why I want you to understand these mistakes so that you can invest in content creation that's actually furthering your business and helping you to book clients and build the dream business and life that you dream of. I've spoken to a lot of online service-based business owners recently who told me that creating content is something that, you know, takes them a lot of time. Even just creating one piece of content is taking them three or four hours and doing it every single week and seeing their return on investment can be pretty discouraging. Creating regular content is important for your business because it helps you build a relationship with potential clients and stay at the top of their mind week in and week out. Regular content also establishes you as an expert in your industry and shows that you know what you're talking about, which builds trust with your potential clients. That is something that they 100% need if they are going to work with you. The easier that you are to trust as a professional, the more easily you will attract, well, you'll attract leads and you'll attract clients. If your content is getting low engagement and not bringing in any potential clients, then listen out for whether you're making one of these mistakes. Mistake number one, you're creating too much how-to content. One thing that I see business owners doing is creating a lot of how-tos in tutorials, and this is totally backwards. Your content should teach your potential clients the what and the why, but never the how, or at least never intimate details of the how, because that's what they should be hiring you for. If you give your audience all of your secrets and you explain to them in lots of tutorials exactly how you do what you sell as a service, no one will feel feel the need to buy your service because all of your tutorials kind of teach them how to do it themselves. I actually learned this lesson the hard way years ago when somebody told me that she wasn't going to purchase from me because I had made so much free high value content that she figured she could just learn everything she needed from me for free. That was when I decided to turn off the majority of my tutorials and my how-tos. You'll still see me creating the how-to content called How To XYZ, but it's not very often. And inside of these, you actually won't see me give away everything, just a few good points. Enough to provide my amazing audience with high value, but not enough that nobody feels the need to hire me or join one of my courses. So remember, stop teaching people how to do everything that they should be hiring you to do. Not only will it put people off from buying from you and encourage them to try and DIY it themselves, but it will also attract other people from your own industry and not your ideal clients. That leads me really nicely onto mistake number two, which is creating content for people in your own industry and not your ideal clients. The other day, I saw a copywriter publish a post about how to get started as a copywriter. She isn't launching a course about starting a copywriting business. She doesn't have an ebook on this or any kind of plans to create something along those lines. My guess is that she is just writing this content because she feels inspired to. But who does that content serve? It doesn't serve her ideal clients because they're not looking to become a copywriter themselves. They're looking for a copywriter that they can hire. This content definitely doesn't serve the business owner either because it doesn't lead to any of her services or products. The only time you should be creating content is if it either leads to one of your products or services or it's related to a product or service you want to launch and you're just testing the waters to see if content on this topic goes down well with your audience so you know whether or not it's worth launching a service or a product about it. 
If you're just creating content for the sake of it, simply because you feel inspired to write about it, that's kind of a waste of your time and energy because it attracts the wrong people to your social media and your business. So unless you want to have a following of the wrong people on those platforms, stick to creating content that leads them to your services and products. So mistake number three is writing about business instead of what your business is actually about. So let's say that you're a graphic designer, but you're feeling really passionate about business lately. So you keep creating posts about things like how to find your first client or whether you choose Dubsado or Honeybook. These kinds of posts, again, are pretty useless unless they drive readers or consumers back to a product or service that you sell. The only time that creating content like this is worthwhile is if you are an affiliate for something and you're promoting an affiliate link or something like that. But even then, I wouldn't overdo affiliate content because at the end of the day, what income you make from your service is a lot higher usually than the income that you can make from affiliates. Plus, affiliate rates fluctuate. So it's not very reliable to focus on creating content that promotes affiliates when their payout rates can change at any time, or they can even just decide to stop paying you and close down their affiliate program. So don't focus too much on affiliate content. Focus on creating the content that your ideal clients need to read and consume or watch before they hire you. So mistake number four, creating content on too many platforms. I can understand why you may think that being on lots of platforms will get you seen by lots of people. That way, you know, you might be thinking, I'm gonna get seen by people on Instagram and Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. You might even think, well, I see you doing this, Nisha, you're on YouTube and you also have a podcast, an Instagram, a Facebook group. So doesn't that mean that I should be in all of these different places as well so I can reach more people? Here's what you don't see. By myself personally, like me, I am not on all of these platforms. I don't touch YouTube whatsoever and I don't really touch my podcast either. Once I create a video, which is usually either created live on Facebook or recorded on my laptop, I have a team member who edits it and publishes it to my podcast and a different team member who publishes it to my blog, YouTube and newsletter. But most of you listening to the podcast don't have team members yet who can do this for you. So don't weigh yourself down trying to be in all of these different places and instead focus on just one or two. By narrowing in on your focus, you can grow quickly in one place instead of spreading yourself and your focus thin across lots of different platforms and not really growing on any of them. For me, for instance, I have a YouTube channel and maybe I'll focus on growing that sometime in the future, but that's not my focus at the moment. My focus is my email list and Instagram. My VA simply uploads my videos to YouTube because it's really quick and easy for her to do. Um, Since, you know, there's not like over 3000 followers there. So it's not like we put that much effort into YouTube. And I don't ever go into my Facebook group Again, in the future of my business, maybe I will hire someone to take over my free Facebook group strategy. But remember, you don't need to be everywhere, especially if you don't have a team. So focus on conquering just a couple of places and then you can always expand to more social media platforms and content platforms in the future when you have a team member who can take over it for you. Okay, mistake number five is having too many opt-ins. I used to have so many opt-ins. I think I had about 30 and now I think I have about four main opt-ins that have different purposes because they are for the same business owner, but just in different stages of their business. So I have, a, I have an opt-in to help you start your business in 30 days, an opt-in to help you book clients consistently and an opt-in called 10 steps to organize your business. And there's also a free masterclass called 10 Steps to Go from Overwhelmed to Organized. Those are my main opt-ins that I promote actively on my website and in my content. There are maybe a few old blog posts that have old opt-ins that I've just forgotten to remove, but that's pretty much it. 
The reason I don't think that it's worth creating a ton of opt-ins or like a new opt-in for every piece of content you create is because not only is this a lot of work for you to do, but it also gives your target clients more to do before they reach out to hire you. Think about it. If you have 20 different PDFs that people can opt in for and you have five different free masterclasses, your ideal clients are going to think to themselves that they could just get through or they should get through your free content first before they buy from you or hire you. So in essence, by having too many opt-ins, you're giving your ideal clients hoops to jump through before they decide to work with you. And that's pointless. The goal of opt-ins is to get your ideal clients on your email list so that you can build a relationship with them and you can show them that you're an expert and show them how you can transform their life and their business so that they'll hire you. By giving away too much free value, you're just sabotaging your own sales and income. I love that you love providing free value and helping your audience. And that's super commendable in a world of businesses where many of them are just after the consumer's money and don't really care about their clients or customers. But you must remember that you are a business, not a non-profit. So if you give away so much content for free, eventually you'll go out of business and then you won't be able to help people anymore. So be strategic about the opt-ins that you offer. Each of my opt-ins lead to funnels that lead to one of my courses, or they lead to the course that I'm going to be launching in March 2021, all about simple marketing. So stay tuned for that. If you are going to create PDFs as opt-ins, think about which ones will lead to your services the best. And if you have lots of opt-ins, remove the ones that don't perform well and just keep the ones that do. So quick recap. Mistake number one, you're creating too much how-to content and tutorials. Mistake number two, you're creating content for people in your own industry and not your ideal clients. Number three, you're writing about business instead of what your business is actually about. Mistake number four, you're creating content on too many platforms. And mistake number five, you have too many opt-ins. So that's it from me today. I hope that you enjoyed this episode and I will speak to you next week.